Hello and welcome to J.I. Colorist. My name is Jody, and today we are continuing a series of watercolor, water medium in the book World of Flowers by Joanna Basford. I have selected this page where we are completing each little section with a different watercolor medium. And today's section is going to be this side panel and we are going to be using Faber Castells Albert Durr watercolor pencils and I have the 60 set which comes in two trays so we will open that up and put that to the side I have pre-prepared the page with Daniel Smith's transparent watercolor ground so it will uh, accept watercolor this is the opposite page and I did not put watercolor ground on this page um, and you can notice that there has been no bleed through and so far we have used uh, Zig Neo Color 2 Derwent Ink Tense and today Faber Castells Albert Durr the other items I have are some paint brushes, some water, a blotting cloth, a water brush, and let's get started. We're keeping each of the backgrounds a similar color so that we can unite the page. Uh, still haven't decided what I'm going to do around the very edge, but uh, we'll get to uh, that. If you're seeing a little bit of shininess, that is the addition of Winsor Newton's iridescent medium, which is a watercolor uh, additive. So we're still sticking to the page. The other side of this uh, double-sided spread is completed in numerous different pencil colored pencils. So that is a separate series. And when we're fully done, you'll have, uh, I'll have tested and tried out a bunch of different mediums now I'm not an expert, I'm a colorist, so with that in mind, let's get started. Okay, I've zoomed you in a bit, and today we're going to be starting with the background. Um, I know I want to do a gradient in colors, and so I've selected five pencils, and I've laid them down by coloring them in a gradient, and I'll do the same in reverse up at the top, and we'll do that together, but I just thought for time's sake I would uh, put those down and I will list off both on screen and right now uh, I will tell you what the colors are. So we've start with Delft Blue 141 I next move into Prussian Blue 246, Bluish Turquoise 149, Phalo Blue 110 and Light Ultramarine 140. So that's going to be the center will meet in the light and we'll go from dark to light in a gradient. So let's go ahead and activate that with water and see how it looks. Make sure you got in frame there. I'm going to start at the lightest area because I don't want to drag the dark area into the light. I may do a little bit of that to merge it, but uh, to first activate it, I want to keep the colors. Now with all water color mediums, they do dry a bit lighter. Um, and because it is a water color paint in a pencil form. This will reactivate when wet. So uh, I will not be spraying a fixative to this page at all because I do not want the fixative to cause my watercolors to run. I'm using this brush is a number six and it's kind of a I don't know the name, but it's not flat and it's not round. So I think that's maybe a 
It's not really pointed, so I don't think it's a cat's tongue, but... So I'm just adding some water and just kind of scumbling a bit on uh, with the paintbrush to kind of activate it. So I'm not scrubbing the paper, I'm just kind of mixing it about. Now you'll notice that there's a darker spot here. And that's from the app, my application of the watercolor ground. It looks like I got a little bit of a extra bit there, but that's okay because watercoloring is perfectly imperfect. So I'll just leave that the way it is. Okay, a bit more water. Not a bit too much water. If you get too much water, just uh, wipe your brush off on your cloth. If you want enough water to activate the pigment, but not enough so that's like going to float away. Okay, so now I'm just kind of merging all the items that are. And if I, if I find a color that has not got enough pigment, then I will let this dry and then I will come back and add some more. So let's turn the page over and we'll start adding the dry medium. Okay, so we're going to start. Oh, I need to move my water bucket out of the way. Okay, so again, Delft Blue, and when you're using pencil directly to the paper, light strokes. You want to put the pigment on the paper, but you don't want to gouge it in. So definitely a light hand, otherwise you're going to have a hard time liquid, liquefying the paint without having to scrub the paper. Okay, a little bit, another layer down here because I want it darker at the start. Okay, next color is Prussian blue. And you don't need to really, you can overlap a little bit if you want, but because it's watercolor, it will move anyway. So you don't need to, and you can also drag pigment. So. You don't have to be spend as much time blending as you do with colored pencils, where you really have to work to blend two colors together. With watercolors, it's a much easier process. Okay, 149 bluish turquoise. I'm just doing about an inch of each. On the other sections we did the uh, background last, so I thought we'd switch it up with this section and do the background first. I'm sorry if you hear my oxygen cannula making noise. Unfortunately, I just can't do anything about that. So, okay, now we're on the last color, which is light ultramarine. And I'm just gonna, sorry, out of frame. Just going to meet up with the, uh, now this section, if it's still a little bit, it's dry, but if it was uh, still damp, you'd have to be careful. You don't wanna color over a damp area you will leave definite um, you will liquefy the paint on the pencil and you will leave definite dark stains that you will then have to work out okay 
Now, oops, one moment. Okay, we're ready to liquefy or activate with water. Again, uh, wet your brush. Make sure there aren't any droplets on the barrel or the ferrule and uh, dab it off if you need to. And just wet the paper and it should the quality of your uh, watercolor pencils um, or any medium is really noticeable once you activate it with water if it activates easily and the pigment is bright then I think that's uh, much nicer and easier to work with these are definitely beautiful pencils and a little goes a long way. I've had them for quite some time and they're still <laughs> still going strong. So you really don't need a lot. So I'm just wet cleaning off the brush in between each color for right now as I wet it. And then I still have quite a bit of water on here so I'm going to damp, tap it off and then with a dryer brush I'm going to mix the two. So not with a wet brush, just with a damp brush. Okay. Move up the page. Clean my brush. Dab it off. Okay, so I hope you've been enjoying this series. I'm not a expert watercolor person, but I do really enjoy playing with the medium and uh, having uh, the ability to use your watercolors in your coloring books. Um, I think it's awesome. So, all right, knock that off the table again. Okay, and just do the center bit. We'll let that dry and then we will decide um, while we're choosing colors for the flowers. We'll let this dry and uh, if we need to add a separate layer um, to deepen up some of the colors, then we will do that before we continue with the flowers. Okay, here's a different angle um, that I thought you'd be able to see how the gradient is working. So the page goes this way. So we'll just put it this way so you can see. And as you can see, um, I think we want to work, do a little bit more work in this area here to have it kind of mimic that. So I'm going to turn the page and I'll zoom you in a bit more and we'll just go over so I'm just going to add a bit more color to this area so we're sticking with the colors that are already on there I'm just adding another layer To deepen it up. Since this is the side of the page, I do want to have some nice colors there. And then we're meeting up in the middle. So this is the light 
and we'll just merge the two. You don't need to have a sharp uh, point. You just need to be able to rub some. So that's also why your pencils don't uh, get used quickly is you're not sharpening them very often unless you really are trying to get into a fine, fine area. But uh, typically that's not the case. Okay, so I'm gonna re-wet this area. Remember to dab it off. We don't want a lot of ink. Not too much. If you have too much water, it really washes it out, so that's not what I'm going for, so I have to be careful to not do that. So, I am trying to keep the colors separate, so I am cleaning the brush off. It's okay to merge the colors a little bit, but I do want it to be a definite gradient. And if you drag your, your stronger colors into your lighter colors, um, obviously the stronger pigment is gonna win. So you're not gonna have the gradient you're really looking for. So even though they are running into each other, you kind of keep them a little bit separate if that makes any sense. Okay, I'll zoom you out a bit and that looks pretty good. Might just fool around a little bit while this dries and uh, go pick some colors I'll, and I'll be right back. Okay, I thought I'd bring you along for part of my pencil selection process. So I've got a little piece of watercolor uh, paper here, just some scraps that I, uh, when I cut down uh, larger pages into eight and a half by 11, um, I'm left with a bit of scrap. So I keep those so that I can test out watercolors before I, while I'm picking them. So I've got uh, one, two, five here, which is middle purple pink. I just thought I'd see what that color looks like. I do have swatches, but my swatches are on bright white paper, and this is a cream colored paper, which is the same cream color as this. So I wanna see how it actually looks on the true color that I'm gonna be coloring on. And then 194 is a red violet. So it's quite a dark, dark color. So I actually want to get more, a bit too much water on my brush there. So, okay, so that's a, bring you in a bit. Okay. And then 121, which is Pale Geranium Lake. That's this guy. So he's quite a bright, bright red. Okay. And then 225 is 225 is dark red. So So why I'm picking these colors is I was kind of thinking about having the flower uh, first all in a lighter shade and then the center areas of the flowers um, would come in with some shading and some some darker colors so uh, 
that was my thinking and they don't all need to be the same color so um, while I'm still on a painting or a picture pencil crayon or a watercolor I always keep the mediums that I've used out so right now I have the blues sitting in this squishy and the flower colors I will also put into that squishy so that I if I need to reach for the color it's uh, it's handy and if I have to put things away I can leave them uh, safe on the desk knowing that they're not going to roll around so okay so let's go with the lighter color with the darker background and then we'll have darker colors uh, with the lighter background so as we want some contrast so we're going to go with the reds so we'll see how these work and if we don't like them then we can always switch them up i'm going to switch to a smaller paintbrush uh, so this is the holbein 001 and it really doesn't matter which brand you use okay we've got you zoomed in hopefully everyone can see that a bit better i'm going to start with 121 pale geranium lake and i'm just going to be adding a little bit to each petal okay i'm gonna get some water Move the water over here out of the way of the camera blot it off And since I know that I'm going to have uh, a darker color in the center, I don't really care if I get, you know, right up to the center, but I do want to get to the edge because that's where I want it to be the lightest. So I'm just activate it. Okay. Now the next color, um, I want it to stay concentrated around the center. So I'm actually going to wait for the rest to dry. If I put it on right away, the wet paint will run into the other wet paint and it'll do more bleeding. And I want there to be a bit more uh, definition. So I'm going to move on to the next and I'm going to do again some more light. Okay. Okay, now that's dry in the center. Okay. Tiniest bit of water. Making sure to wipe off any water if it's on your and just lightly now these flowers are going to take a couple of layers so this first layer is just basically activating it at the center, drawing uh, it out slightly to merge, and then leaving it. Okay. And we'll do that. That one's dry.
You don't want to draw the dark color to the edge because I want it to remain light. So we're going to let that dry and we're going to choose the next two colors. So these next two, we will use the mid purple pink 125 and then red violet 194. light you could work tip to tip um, like the tip of your brush right onto the tip of here but then that gets it wet so make sure you always uh, dry that tip off but since I have a number of flowers to do I'm not wanting to get the tip of my pencil wet at this point, maybe in a little bit, but not at this point. So I'm doing two at a time at this time. Oops. Okay. Okay, now the red flower down here is dry. And we're going to come back again and we're going to do another around the center. And I'm adding quite a bit of pigment. And clean off my brush. Okay. We want very little water. I want the pigment to remain as strong as possible. And I want it to stay in that area. So. Okay. Okay, the second color combination is middle pink, purple pink, 125, just a very light, and then we go around the center with red violet, 194. Do both. Okay. A little bit of water. And we're just going to lightly liquefy it, just staying in that very center area. We want the deepest uh, color to be right at the base um, or the center of the flower. And then we'll let that dry for a minute, then we'll come back in with another layer of deep and we'll bring it up a little bit and this is how these flowers are looking now. So while those are happening, we're going to pick a bright yellow for the center. And we're going to go with cadmium yellow 107. Try it out on our 
paper here first. Yeah, that's pretty bright. Other yellow we could try, which would be a Naples yellow, uh, 185. Just trust out a couple of yellows and make sure we're picking the best one. I think this one is definitely brighter. Um, this is a bit richer, but it also um, might be more flower. So we're going to go with the uh, Naples yellow. And we're going to color that right in the center. Now we're going to need the brush to be almost completely dry. Okay, excellent. And we also need the stock. So let's go with maybe earth green yellowish. Let's see what that looks like. So that's this guy. On camera. Yeah, that's a really nice color. So I think I'm going to do the stalk or the, the stem, the vine, and as well as the flower, sorry, the leaves. Words are hard today um, in the same color. So this is 168. Okay. So those are extra colors. So while um, items are drying on the page, we can go and be working on those. So this is dry, so I'm going to add another layer. And this is where you may want to sharpen your pencil just to get a just a bit of a finer point so we can actually get into this area. Okay, liquify. Once we have a couple of flowers done, um, I'll leave the video and, and uh, continue on. Dragging a little bit of that color, but not much. And then we're actually bringing it back. And by wiping off your paintbrush, um, you can lift color too if you've if you drag it too far. Tiny flowers. I should have tried to pick a page that had much bigger spots on it to do this, but I did want a page that had many panels on it, so you kind of have a bit of trade-off. But it does show you that you can really use watercolor on any size. As long as you have a, the paintbrush size to the painting size or the picture size. Okay, 
and whilst that is drying we will go and I'm gonna sharpen this just a little bit because those vines are awfully narrow okay so you're coloring just like you would in a book just with less pressure okay if these were bigger uh, pieces on the page then I would be using uh, additional colors and doing more shading and stuff but when you have something so tiny um, sometimes less is more so if we were trying to do shading on a vine and leaves this small it would be uh, beyond my scope okay we'll do the center of these two and then I will turn the camera off I will do the rest on this page then I will come back and we will uh, see how it's looking and if we need to add some additional colors or some kind of bling then uh, we'll do that add a little bit of bleed through there so just wipe it off wait for it to dry and then add more of the uh, Naples yellow all right, I'll be back. Okay, I've applied uh, the pencil down and I just need to activate it. So I thought I'd bring you back in here. I'll bring you a little closer, so hang tough with the camera. Okay, so I've got the green down and I just thought I'd do a little bit of um, Cover this up, get some water, wipe it off. I'm just going to pick up a bit of uh, ink or paint directly from the tip and that'll add a, just at the base we're going to do a little bit of shading on some of the bigger leaves okay now we're going to wipe some of that off now that I applied some paint just gonna come back and shade it in whoops Just lighten up the tips. We want the base of the leaf to be a little bit darker. So we'll push the pigment down a little bit. So first I applied some pigment to this area and then I'm just blending it down. And not to every leaf, but uh, add a little bit of variation to some of them so this is how they're looking and the center is not on that one so let's grab the Naples yellow we'll get if you're gonna do the brush to the tip make sure you have something underneath either a palette or a paper towel or something because uh, you don't want it to drip onto your 
picture. So darken up this yellow. We added some Windsor Newton iridescent to the other centers of the flower, but I'm not sure if we'll do that over here. We instead might maybe put a little bit of stickles or something on top. Oh, that's not a watercolor medium, so. And it is watercolor month here in July, and I'm filming this at the end of June. I will be off for a little bit uh, on holidays in July, so I wanted to film some watercolor items ahead of time so that uh, there's some videos up on the channel that are watercolor related. In July, okay, I'm gonna activate this. And just blend it a little bit and if you think you've gone too far go from the edge of the the tip of the petal back down and we've got a line here from my application of the Windsor Newton and that's because I have these um, disc binding holes here and I was having a hard time getting close enough to the edge I didn't want to rip any of the holes so uh, it's a smoother application in the center of the page than it was at the end. So I, that's the way it goes sometimes. Okay. We'll keep going up the page and I'll be back. Okay, all of the flowers are done. However, I want to darken up a few. So um, as an example, I'm coming in again with a wet brush or damp, not wet, but damp right to the tip of the pencil and then just deepening up. That's a bit too much water, so. Just deepening up a little bit letting that dry down just a tad and then blending it out. Just adding a little bit to of the same color to the areas and then just with some regular a little bit of water, damp brush only, blend that out. That's a big difference between ink tents and uh, a watercolor is that um, this was dry and I just used water to reactivate it. So um, Okay, I don't think you're ever going to be perfect, but I think that's probably as good as we're going to get. We'll zoom you out. Okay, here we are zoomed out so you can see a bit more of uh, how it's looking. Now, the centers are 
um, bright, but they're not blingy. Um, so I may, at the end, when we do the final look at this page and see what's uh, missing, uh, I may come back and add a little bit of clear stickles to the center of those flowers um, uh, to give it some zing. But for today, I think we're going to leave that alone, let it dry. And as with the other ones, um, once the page is fully done, we may have one additional video that does touch-ups and accents um, to bring the whole page together. So this is what the page is looking like so far. And thank you for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful, colorful week. And I'll see you in the next video where we are going to use either Paul Rubin's metallic and regular watercolors together on this area or the Arteza water brush pens up here. Or we still have the Graphitint and Stadler uh, graphite uh, colored water pencil colored pencils as well so stay tuned and see what we come up with next bye bye